For a long time, most people believed that Christopher Columbus was the first explorer to discover America, the first to conduct a successful round-trip expedition across the Atlantic. As new information has emerged, our perspective on history has changed. Contrary to popular belief, Columbus was not the trailblazer who first set foot on the Americas, but rather one of the final explorers to make the journey. 500 years before Columbus, a daring group of Vikings commanded by Leif Erikson landed in North America and built a colony. An ancient manuscript describes a further incident in the 6th century in which an oxhide canoe was used by Irish monks led by St. Brendan to explore new regions. After seven years, they came home and claimed that they had discovered a place covered with lush vegetation, which some people thought was Newfoundland. As we go deeper into history, we realize that the Americas have always been lands of immigrants. Over countless generations, different people have found places from different parts of the world after setting foot in an unknown world as Stone Age hunters first did thousands of years ago. But in today's video, we will embark on a thrilling journey through the annals of history, exploring the tale of a Viking's groundbreaking discovery of America. Leif Erikson, a daring seaman and the first European to visit the Americas, he was one of the most successful explorers in history, but he is often forgotten. Leif called the North America Vinland, the land of wines. Leif's father, Eric the Red, was also a well-known explorer, and he founded two Norse colonies in Greenland. His father was also an outlaw. Nadat was also Leif's distant relative, who is credited with the discovery of Iceland. Well, you see Leif came from a family with a long list of explorers. Leif Erikson, also known as Leif the Lucky, was born in 970 CE in Iceland, the son of infamous adventurer Eric Thorvaldsson, more commonly known as Eric the Red and Thorhild. Alongside his brothers Thorvald and Thorstein and his sister Fridas, Leif was raised in the shadow of his father's tumultuous past, as Eric had been exiled from Iceland following a conviction for murder. To fully understand Leif's story, it is necessary to first delve into the tale of his infamous father. Eric was gone for three years while discovering and exploring Greenland. Eric returned to Iceland and informed the locals about the strange place he'd found. Eric moved his family and many other immigrants and created a new home in Greenland, where Leif grew up in a settlement named Bravalid. Eric was chosen as Greenland's people's leader, leaving him little time to devote attention to Leif. As a result, Leif was mainly educated and raised by an enslaved German named Turker. He taught Leif about everything, including reading and writing. He taught him Celtic and Russian languages. He even taught Leif about the ways of trade and also about the old sagas and plants. Most importantly, he taught him how to use swords and axes. Whenever Leif gets free time, he watches ships come and go to the harbor. He listened to stories of the sailors, which he loved. When Leif became an adult, he married Thorgunna. Together they have two children. And in 1000 CE, Leif sailed to Norway. When he reached there, he was presented in the court of the Christian king, Olaf Tryggvason. When he introduced himself, the king said that he knew his father. King was so impressed with Leif that he invited him to spend time in his palace. Leif was in no hurry to return to Greenland, so he accepted the king's invitation. As an esteemed guest of the king, he was lavished with the finest of royal treatment and had the privilege of being in the close circle of the king. He lived a very luxurious life there. One day, King Olaf told Leif how he also used to worship old gods. He said there was a plague in Norway that killed many people. He said that the old gods weren't listening to him and that he started worshiping Christ. King Olaf was baptized along with thousands of Norwegians, and the plague disappeared. Leif also had doubts about the old Viking gods. He believed the king's preaching about this new god. He agreed to be baptized and decided to follow this new religion. Leif became a Christian. He finally returned to Greenland, accompanied by priests, to spread this new religion to Greenland on the order of King Olaf, and converted many of the colonists to Christianity. The primary sources of information about the Viking voyages to Vinland are Icelandic lores, the Saga of Eric the Red and the Saga of the Greenlanders. These stories were written 250 years after the Eric the Red voyages to Greenland and are open to interpretation. However, the historical documents of the two sagas combined with archaeological evidence of chieftain halls found in Finland with a stamp on the saga's authenticity. The story starts with Leave watching boats and he sees an old beat-up ship slowly rowing toward the shore. Jarni Herjolson, a merchant by trade on the ship. He had sailed from Iceland to Greenland to visit Leif's father, Eric, but he had gone for over a year. Leif followed Jarni to a hall where he said that mist had covered a northern star 
and he couldn't navigate correctly. They sailed non-stop for many days and finally spotted land, but it wasn't Greenland. It was something else. Instead of glaciers, trees covered the beaches of this new land. Summer was ending and Bjarni did not want to spend a winter in this new land, because he knew that spending winter in an unknown land could result in his death. This mysterious land was also covered with forests, so he turned back and went back to Greenland before the winter. Leif purchased the ship of Bjarni Herjolson, and he sailed to this mysterious land intentionally. He recruited a crew of 35 men and set sail toward the new territories. While the exact details are shrouded in mystery, it is widely speculated that a significant portion of their original discoveries now constitutes modern-day northern Canada. They initially landed in a flat region covered in rocks and glaciers. Ericsson called this location Helioland, meaning land of flat rocks. Helioland is thought to be the modern-day Baffin Island. He proceeded further since this barren expanse of rocks had a little purpose for a possible Norse settlement. Moving south along the coast, Ericsson and his crew arrived at what is now known as Labrador. Ericsson dubbed this location Markland, or Forest Land, since it was covered in trees and white beaches. They kept going south till they reached an island. Upon arriving ashore, they found the region to be lush and green, with trees bearing delicious wild grapes. Ericsson and his crew constructed cabins and spent the winter in what he called Vinland, or Wineland. While on shore, they discovered an abundance of fish for food and grass that would be ideal for cattle. After that, Leif split his men into two groups. Half stayed in cabins and did chores, while the other half explored the region. Occasionally, Leif stayed to assist with the chores and then went exploring afterward. At one time, Leif's foster father Turker, a member of Leif's crew, discovered a region thriving with grapevines. They gathered a number of plants and grapes to take home with them. They set sail for Greenland next spring. Leif sailed back to Greenland after loading his ship with the grapes and vines they had found. The trip was largely uneventful. However, he stumbled upon a shipwreck and stranded crew members on the way home. Leif took the 15 men on board his ship and returned them to Greenland. The men ultimately found places to live and settle down. He was greeted as a hero when he returned home. He was then known as Leif the Lucky. Although Leif Eriksson never returned to North America, his brother Thorvald did. Eriksson spent the rest of his life in Greenland, where he promoted Christianity to the locals. After his father's passing, he took over as settlement leader and remained in that position until his death. Eriksson's actual death date is uncertain. However, it is thought to have occurred around 1020 CE. The majority of what we know about Leif's life is derived from sagas. These sagas originated as oral stories passed down through generations before being written down. The Vikings were unsuccessful in establishing permanent colonies in North America. On the other hand, Ericsson arrived in North America roughly five centuries before Christopher Columbus. Leave Ericsson Day is celebrated on October 9th. It was established in 1964 by U.S. President Lyndon B. Johnson to celebrate and acknowledge Ericsson's services to American history. Well, that's pretty much for the video. Thank you for tuning in to our exploration of history. We hope you found this video insightful. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and notification bell to stay updated. Don't forget to share your thoughts with us in the comments section. As always, thanks for watching. We will see you in the next one.